African accent um, in its customary style uh, continues to flourish, a point that I need to stress, as a consequence of the generous and consistent participation of some of the great faculty that teach at Berklee College of Music that many, quite rightly and appropriately, describe at the leading college for the study of contemporary music. My guest this afternoon, whom I invited because he was so scintillating and exciting the first time that African Ascent had him about a year ago, John Kellogg requires no detailed academic introduction. He is an internationally acclaimed lawyer, a professor, a consultant so to so many firms, and uh, the author of uh, one uh, major statement on um, the, the arena of uh, black music and music in general today, taking care of your music business, um, he calls it. In the first round of my introduction of this uh, figure to Afghan Ascent, the conversation um, focused on that book, uh, its themes, um, its rhythms, uh, its contours, its strategies, its advice uh, for all uh, aspiring and existent um, uh, artistic temperaments. Uh, today, when Afghan Ascent uh, decided to invite him for the second time, uh, the focus of our discussion will be a continuation of some of those themes that we began there. Uh, but we're also going to address uh, new themes that he has been working on. In his um, future book, uh, he tells me, uh, the, title, uh, the title for which uh, I'm not uh, privy to, I didn't have the opportunity to ask him. Trained at major universities, Syracuse itself, uh, Case Western uh, University. Uh, he takes great pride, for example, in having attained uh, a JD, uh, which he uses uh, to, to teach these exciting courses that he teaches at Berkeley College of Music from Case Western University. African Ascent is privileged, honored, and excited to bring John Kellogg from Berkeley College of Music for the next hour. Thanks well, to come to Afghanistan. Thank you, Dr. Kellogg. It's a pleasure being here with you again and being here at BNN, uh, the great studio here. I really enjoyed it last time, and you are a man of your word. You said you would bring me back in a, in a year's time to talk about new developments in the music industry, and certainly a number of things have happened over that period of time, so I appreciate having the opportunity to not only be here, but to be uh, on the faculty at uh, Berkeley College of Music, and I'm really grateful that we have a great president, Roger Brown, who's made it his point to make a part of the mission statement at Berklee College of Music reflect that contemporary music and popular music is really based upon and based out of the music of the African diaspora. So I feel very proud to not only be on your faculty with you, but to be uh, in an institution that acknowledges that and encourages that. That's wonderful. And um, as I was uh, coming here, um, I'm always curious, curious like you. Uh, that's why uh, we are academics, because we are very curious. Right. I asked a few students uh, what uh, they thought of you, and they all invariably say that you're just brilliant who is saving some souls. Wow. I wonder what they're referring to. <laughs> I don't know what they're referring to either, but I hope that I can get impart some kind of knowledge and hopefully provide some inspiration uh, to the students to continue to gather the information that they need to not only change their lives uh, by creating great music or managing talent who is really creating great music, but also to develop their businesses to the point that they can be of benefit to their communities because that's the key thing I'm finding is, is still lacking in our community, uh, us harnessing the economic power, the entrepreneurial power to really create uh, opportunities and jobs for our people to really uh, go on and, and exploit not only the music, but uh, the economic uh, power that's uh, a part of that. That's remarkable. And um, again, because I'm curious, each and every time uh, I walk by your office, you're crowded with books, crowded with students, um, students going in and out. You hardly have time uh, yeah. for much else. Um, and uh, it appears as if, uh, as if you've been quite busy lately doing some important work. <laughs> I wonder what you're working on. Great. Thank you for asking. Uh, you know, it gets much easier in the summer. That's why I enjoy it. Uh, I have uh, the time to concentrate on my research. 
Uh, but of course, my door being uh, assistant chair of music business management, my door is always open to students for advice and counsel. But I'm working on a, a piece right now, really delving into the history of a changeover in the music charts on Billboard magazine, which is the primary source of, uh, of a determination of success of popular records that are out by their position on the charts, on the Billboard weekly charts. And I'm really investigating uh, how the charts changed about 20 years ago with the incorporation of SoundScan, which is a technology that allows the barcodes to be read as music is scanned and sold, and it is immediately downloaded into a database that shows exactly what sold where and what stores all across this country. And that was incorporated in determining uh, the charts, the weekly chart positions in 1991. It made a major impact on a couple of genres of music. One, the country genre, mm -hmm. as well as the black music genre. So I'm really investigating that and I'm doing research to see. I recall it making a major difference in that you had a lot of records, albums in particular, uh, by black artists that didn't make it into the top 10 of the Billboard Top 200 charts until they changed the system. And once they changed the system, they actually found out that the black albums and country albums were selling as well as, if not better than, a lot of the rock acts. And so it made a major ch uh, difference, on, not only on the charts, but it also made a major difference in the business. And I certainly experienced that as an entertainment lawyer because I was then able to negotiate a different type of deal for my clients who were black artists See. because it was found that they were in fact outselling or selling equal to white artists so I was in a better position to command uh, more income and more advances for my clients. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, which leads me now to, 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 to ask you to do the impossible but uh, knowing you I'm sure you're going to give me a crash course on this. What is the music business exactly? Great question. Uh, the music business is really everything that surrounds the commerce related to uh, moving the music after it's created. It's the packaging, so to speak. It's the marketing. It's the promotion. It's the distribution. And it's the sales and the accounting for those uh, the income that's generated from those sources of exploitation of the music. So, as you know, last time I said that uh, the music business is 10% music and 90% business. And uh, what we're trying to do in our music business department is really trying to marry that, the, the art and commerce piece while really looking at the commerce piece in s specifically as it relates to that great art that our uh, yeah. musicians, not only at Berkeley, but uh, the great popular artists uh, are creating uh, across the world. Mm -hmm. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong then, um, uh, philosophically speaking, uh, what we're talking about is the following. Um, artists, musicians included, yes. in fact primarily musicians, uh, who are producing music may sometimes um, idealize what they're doing and think that uh, if the music is great, intrinsically great, it doesn't have to be treated as a business venture. It is somehow going to be discovered by potential viewers and um, it's going to be bought by them. And of course the shrewd uh, professor of um, music business would tell su the, such students that they are having illusions mm. uh, that it is not really, mm, not all the time, uh, a matter of uh, how great you are at what you do, yes. but rather how great you are at promoting what you do, right. which would be discovered as great only and only if you know the market strategies through which to promote it. That's true. That's very true. And those marketing strategies have changed, and that's why I'm glad you brought me back a year later, because they've changed just over the past year. The power of the Internet and various portals on the Internet is really changing how music is marketed and really decentralizing the promotional efforts of uh, the marketing of music, specifically as it relates to major labels. We just recently uh, had the sale 
of EMI Records and EMI Publishing to Sony ATV Publishing and to Universal Music Group. Those two, there's two companies within EMI, the publishing group and the, the record company group, and they were both sold to uh, competing uh, major labels. Uh, Universal Music Group has the largest market share and they absorb the EMI uh, artists, which includes some great artists like Lady Annabellum, uh, Katy Perry and others, Nora Jones. Uh, and then you have um, uh, Sony ATV taking over EMI Publishing, which has one of the most biggest catalogs, that has one of the, the biggest catalogs of uh, songs. Uh, of uh, the major uh, publishing companies, including uh, the Joe Bett catalog, which is the Motown catalog of songs. And I think they also control the great songs of Gamble and Huff that had great hits on the OJs and uh, Billy Paul and Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes in the 1970s. So now you only have three, you only have three major labels left. You have uh, Sony Music. Sony Music. Yes, you have Universal Music Group and Universal you have the Music. Warner Music Group. So. Those companies have been consolidated down that there's only three major labels. Amazing. They've greatly downsized over the course of the past two years because CDs and albums aren't selling like they used to. But this has created quite an opportunity for artists to expose and exploit their talents via the internet through channels like YouTube and uh, a number of other uh, internet channels. So. I think that it's the greatest time in music because now you have the opportunity for entrepreneurs to really develop their small businesses. You have talents who can record themselves, actually put a YouTube video up, expose themselves to the world, and then at the same time exploit their music by using certain aggregators, digital aggregators who will place the music on iTunes and other sources of dig 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 digital distribution to enable them to sell their music directly to the public. And uh, so it's a fascinating time in that respect and uh, I hope that we'll talk a little bit more about the, uh, the, the, the tremendous influence of YouTube and some of the successes that some of the uh, students at our school have had. With In them. fact, uh, why don't we do that? Okay, um, great. Uh, I would like you to talk about YouTube at length for this reason. African Ascent, the, the very television program right. that is interviewing you, yeah. is on YouTube. But right. it is stuck there. It yes. is not doing anything. It is. It's fantastic. Uh, we have two instances that we've, uh, since I last sat down with you, yes. that have occurred uh, from the of the of the discovery of uh, Berkeley talent via their YouTube channels. The mm -hmm. first is a group called Carmen. And Carmen is a, a male-female duo who started doing, a couple of years ago, just YouTube videos. And they would do cover songs. And those are songs that have been made popular by, the, by other artists. And they put their own spin on it and create their own clever videos. Well, Carmen came up with the video of a, a Chris Brown song. I can't think of the name of the song right now, but it had a very clever rap in it on the Chris Brown version by Buster Rhymes. And uh, people who know Buster Rhymes know that he has a very staccato type of uh, flow in, in his uh, rapping. And, and the uh, female uh, vocalist uh, did her own version of, of Buster Rhymes rapping. It's a very clever and uh, within a couple of days, they had 300,000 hits. And clearly, you know what that means because this program is up on YouTube and it, YouTube. Right. And if you've got 300,000 hits in a couple of days, that means that you've had major penetration. Well, they got 300,000 hits in two days. In and, two days. In two days. And uh, the Ellen DeGeneres show called them and said, "We like you. We love your video. We saw that you acquired 300,000 hits in two days." We'd like for you to come out to our show and be on the Ellen Show, which, as you know, Ellen DeGeneres show is, is seen by maybe three to four million people mm -hmm. daily. Incredible. And it's on, and they, they went there, they performed, they did a great job, and after that, a bidding war between a number of labels started to happen. And uh, it got to the point that uh, the label that signed them was L.A. Reid, who was the... Uh, a great, great songwriter and record company owner. He was a part of LaFace Records with uh, uh, Babyface. 
Um, he was appointed the president of Epic, Epic Records, and he made Carmen his very first signing. And it turned out to be a seven-figure deal, uh, which, um, and that's quite a commitment in today's market for a label to commit to seven figures uh, for recording an act. So that was one instance. That was in April of last year. Then, in, uh, at the end of September, I had a female student burst into my office. You say a lot of students come into my That's office. Right. Yes. Now I know office. what they're talking about. <laughs> well, this <laughs> surprised me. She came into my I had nothing to do with Carmen. Uh, they had graduated a couple of years before, and I hadn't taught them, so I didn't have any connection with them. But uh, this young lady comes into my office. She says, Mr. Kellogg, someone told me to come and see you, that you were the person that I needed to see. And I said, well, OK, tell me what's going on. She says, Mr. Kellogg, my partner and I, uh, who was a male, we put together a cover song of uh, Adele's Someone Like You, and we entered it into a cover contest, a video cover contest. And uh, she says, we've gotten 300,000 hits. We put it up, and she came into my office Tuesday. We put it up Sunday night, and Tuesday she says, we've gotten 300,000 hits. So I looked her in the eye and I said, Ellen's going to call you. She said, Ellen? Ellen who? Who's Ellen? <laughs> I said, Ellen DeGeneres is going to call you. Remarkable. The next day, she came into my office, Mr. Kellogg, Mr. Kellogg, I've got exciting news. One, we won the video contest, the cover video yes. contest. She said, you know something, Mr. Kellogg? Ellen DeGeneres' producers called us and they want us to be on the show next week. I said, I told you that they were going to call because it was the same formula. She, uh, they amassed 300,000 hits, which shows that their video connected with people. And a lot of the com most of the comments were very positive. People loved it. So that was a completely new form of exposure Absolutely. that hasn't happened uh, ever before with this whole YouTube channel phenomenon. And now television shows and labels aren't necessarily going out to clubs to discover new talent, but they're going to the YouTube channels to, to and see. finding out how many uh, hits, hits that they've generated. Artists are getting on their YouTube channel. What kind of audiences are they building before they get involved? Remarkable. And uh, since that time, I've been involved uh, with the young lady in, in representing her, and, and uh, she, we just completed a deal with her with a major label as well, with the uh, duo that she's involved in. So I think that this kind of points to the fact that you have new situations that are occurring, new ways to market your music and make yourself popular so that you don't have to go through the traditional channels of having to perform on the road, as when I was coming up. In the bands I was in, that was, the, that was the formula. You had to perform on the road for years and years, years. before you got discovered right. uh, by record labels. You had to build up those audiences one show at a time. Incredible. Uh, the, uh, this um, should excite you then. Um, just recently, uh, ever s uh, since you appeared about a year ago, I had invited at least um, three separate um, bands, uh, informal bands, who performed uh, mm. in Afghan accent. I posted them on YouTube. Yes. But wha what I have noticed so far, John, is the hits are not that impressive. Mm -hmm. The maximum uh, that one of these uh, performers, uh, who did a combination of reggae and jazz, yes. very inventive group, uh, three of them, right. uh, a band of three, I remember if, uh, the statistics is right. I think they generated about 185 hits right. um, in two days. Right. So I wonder uh, what it is that they did not do right uh, to, to generate these 300,000 300, and some numbers that these um, two individuals that you speak of did. What should I advise? Uh, future performers uh, for Afghan Asen to do? Well, I think, I think uh, uh, the student I was talking about in the last example I gave you that most recently went on the Ellen Show is an example that you have to maximize the entire internet to build your audience. 
the crucial thing that happened to them was that they entered that cover song into a cover contest I see. with a major internet blogger, Perez Hilton. Ah. Perez Hilton is a major gossip blogger about music and all things celebrity. Ah, I see. And he has thousands, hundreds of thousands, probably millions of subscribers to his channel, uh, to his blog. So you have to network the blogs. For instance, you mentioned that it was kind of a reggae jazz. Yes. So it would be important then, once they have the video, they should be indebted to you first for Thank giving you. the content to them and enabling them to perform here and have it recorded so that they can have something to put up on the Internet. And at that point, then they should really work other types of uh, channels so they might have a blogger that's blogging about reggae groups and jazz groups and they should reach out to the blogger okay. and actually uh, enter in on their message board and say that, okay, if they're a reggae group, you know, Maxi Priest was good, Shaba Ranks was an excellent uh, reggae person, but you should hear our group, this group has, you should go to this site and see this performance that we did on African Ascents. And that's how you, so you have people that are interested see. that will see, well, I really like Shaba Ranks, I really like Maxi Priest, let me go link into this video and see if I like the act. And then they create more hits by really networking with other types of internet sites that really raise their profile and build their audience, expand their audience. Incredible. And, and to, to return to some of the exciting themes of your first book, um, um, uh, the, 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 your major book, yeah. let's talk about the three Ps again. Right. Um, um, I like those um, the constructs and um, apply them uh, to, to, to guide this future exploration in YouTube. Right. Well, I think that that will really go possibly to, to uh, professional attitude. Uh, which is the third uh, big P, a powerful product, uh, professional attitude, and uh, also um, uh, a business procedure is very important. And so I think that you're looking at a profession, having a good professional attitude is really absorbing what's going on and what is next, what's on the cutting edge. I see. And the things I just talked about uh, is, I think, a, a part of that. People have to understand that the internet is really changing the way we live, the way we shop. Uh, it's really reflecting uh, our culture in a different way. So you really have to be skilled and, and get as much education as you can. Uh, dealing with the internet and being able to uh, connect with people, uh, work on exploiting your material Incredible. through various uh, ideas and aspects related to the internet. In short, what you're suggesting is that we need a radical professional um, attitudinal change yes. with respect to right. what we create, uh, how we create it, Correct. whom we create it for, yes. how we distribute it, right. uh, so forth and so on. That's it. So we need trans uh, a transformation there. Absolutely. Which brings me um, now to, to, to discuss um, a very important sub a subset mm, of uh, music business, black music business. Yes. Let me open a Pandora's box. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are the conditions um, th 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 that must be attended to in order for black talent, musical talent, which has always been extraordinary, uh, but which could even go further uh, the, because, um, as you said in the first interview, uh, a phrase that stuck in my mind, uh, talent is black, uh, is black, he said, uh, just yeah. like uh, um, oil is Arab. That's right. Or talent is to blacks as oil, oil is to is Arabs. To Arabs. That's correct. Um, That's I would correct. like us to um, expand on that, really. Well, take amazing. your time and detail it. Well, I, I'd just like to say that I've seen some great growth over the years since I've been practicing law and been involved in the business and uh, that is what I feel is, is my role is to continue to encourage uh, our youth uh, that may not have musical talent but might have bis brilliant business minds, might have excellent uh, social media skills, 
might uh, have brilliant ideas for new uh, ways to exploit talent via the internet and other types of uh, uh, media uh, uh, outlets to go and get the education. We really need them to, to provide the backbone uh, to enable us to use these very valuable resources. It's not that the, it's that the resources are, are just valuable, but they're very rare. They have tremendous historical and cultural uh, significance. And for us to use and harness that, harness, harness uh, the economic power to be able to uh, move our community forward. As you know, we have uh, uh, one of the highest unemployment rates uh, in our community's history right. currently. But at the same time, we have tremendous success in the field of sports and entertainment, particularly music. So we need other people to really uh, work on getting the skills and uh, the knowledge to be able to handle the business on behalf of these great creative talents that we have. I've seen some great success. They just had an, art, uh, an issue of Billboard magazine that had um, a, a a survey of the most powerful uh, people in black music. And I was just really impressed and happy to see that there were so many black uh, entrepreneurs and creative people and business people that are on that list now. You have uh, the Williams brothers who are the owners of Cash Money Records now. A lot of people have a problem with the lyrics and I have a problem with a lot of the lyrics in rap music. but. The fact of the matter is, is that Cash Money Records is one of the most successful labels. Uh, Young Money Records, that's owned by a, a, an artist, Lil Wayne, has had great success, and they're really at the top of the charts, have been for the past uh, 12 years. Uh, and they've created, they have one of the best deals, form of deals, that you can have with a record label, in that uh, they have a, what is called a pressing and distribution deal. Usually in most deals with the record companies, the artists only get 15% of the income. The record company controls 85% of the income. But in a pressing and distribution deal, the major record label that distributes uh, the product only gets 15% of the income. And the creative talent that owns the recordings gets 85% of the income. And that's the kind of deal that Cash Money has with their uh, Universal Music Group. And uh, it's just exciting to me to see that these young entrepreneurs have this kind of economic power. Uh, they have black business advisors. Ber uh, Vernon Brown is their business manager. He's someone who came up with me around the same generation. Yes. And I'm glad to see that they've entrusted their business to uh, someone like Vernon Brown, who is an accountant, a business manager first, but he's also a lawyer. So uh, I'm hoping that young uh, blacks We'll be able to see that we need more people in that position to be able to take the next cash money records, the next great, great creative talents, harness that economic power and create opportunities to employ other blacks in our community to really be able to offset this horrible uh, situation that we're in mm -hmm. uh, economically. What is remarkable um, in, uh, in what you just said, um, correct me if I've misunderstood you, is that by talent, you are not necessarily and exclusively uh, focusing on musicality. Right. Much more importantly, or just as importantly, you're also emphasizing the fact that there is business talent right. hidden yes. among blacks yes. that yet has to be tapped on. Right. It's not just a matter of singing, although that is quite substantial. Right. It's not just a matter of mastering instruments, as important that is. In addition to that, there are also talents who could help those who could sing, who master instruments to do better. Yes, absolutely. No question about it. And I hope that that's what we're trying to uh, mm -hmm. uh, encourage with the work that we're doing. And once again, I'm, I'm very inspired. I mean, uh, for every Jay-Z that you see on the front line, you have uh, people like Jay Brown and Ty Ty Smith that works with Jay-Z's company, Rock Nation, that are involved behind the scenes doing great it's things. It's incredible. Um, yes. What you're saying once again is that uh, the entrepreneurial um, hidden genius yes. 
um, in the black population and, uh, is hidden. Yep, right. And uh, what you're encouraging is that it better disclose itself. Oh, well, absolutely, because you're going to have more and more entrepreneurs like these two acts I just mentioned from Berkeley that came within three months or six months, went from creating videos in their dorm rooms to having deals with major labels and might nice. be able to have in it. Carmen, the first group that got discovered last April through their video, uh, just released their first single the beginning of this year and it went to number one on the dance charts. They're doing uh, promotional tours on radio, on radio station uh, concerts all across the country. They're touring the world now. So within one year, they are in business. And I offer uh, that you can have the same thing happen through a lot of uh, artists uh, in communities, throughout the black communities all across this nation that could possibly have that same type of success. Once they have that success, then they're going to need creative people that can come in, think very creatively on the business end that are going to be able to help them maximize and exploit uh, the, their talent uh, so that they can generate the kind of economic, uh, not windfall, but uh, just economic uh, of, of forces and, and uh, to be able to, to contribute to creating opportunities in their community. It's remarkable. And um, once again, at Berkeley, uh, in this um, uh, department that I look at, in yeah. which you are an assistant chair, among many other things, uh, what you're doing, uh, which I think most of my viewers um, are not aware of, mm -hmm. is that you're training musicians yes. who understand business right. and business persons who understand musicians. You're, right. you're, you're right. doing some cutting edge kind of work. Well, you know, that's we should great talk thing. more about that. Well, you know, the great thing is, and this is one of the reasons why I enjoy being at uh, Berkeley College of Music, in that there's 4,300 musicians. Every student that comes to Berkeley has to be able to play an instrument or sing, and certainly the voice is an instrument. Uh, and a lot of people, don't, I had someone just call me yesterday, uh, and it's interesting, aside, uh, she's the manager of an artist uh, named Kim, who's a tremendously talented artist. I enjoy his music. Uh, great performer as well. To me, he's one of the few acts that's upholding the tradition of R&B male vocalist that has great performing prowess as well, live performing prowess. Live. But she mm -hmm. called and she says, uh, you know, Mr. Kellogg, I'd like to attend Berklee College of Music. I've gotten some credits from other schools and I'm wondering if I could transfer. And the first thing I had to tell her was, well, what instrument do you play? And her response was, I don't play an instrument at all. I uh, have been involved in the business area for Kim for over 20 years and I have great experience and I had to just let her know that I, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, at Berkeley, you have to be a musician. You have to have a musical background. You have to be able to audition on an instrument or be able to sing to be admitted to, to Berkeley. Now, once you get to Berkeley, if you find that you have an inclination toward the music business, you that can ish. opt to major in, in music, music business management. But you do have to be a musician. I and I think it's great because even our music business majors have uh, musical sensibilities that I think really uh, contribute and help to uh, give them another perspective that probably makes them better managers, it makes them better business owners, it makes them uh, better entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so mm, sadly, or perhaps not so, not so sadly then, uh, the talent that uh, you speak of with respect to the black population is musical talent then. That yeah. is the uh, first necessary and sufficient condition that they must satisfy. Uh, to enter the Berkeley zone. Yes, I yes see. they do. And that's been a topic of discussion and in our department. Um, we know that you might have people just like the young lady that called me that has a great business background, great business experience. Yes. And should we consider uh, admitting people that could be brilliant on, on the business end. That's why. Right. That may not have musical talent, but could be the next person that's going to be able to uh, come up with a great company like Cash Money Records or Young that's Money right. Records. Correct. And, and should we be in a position to uh, be able to uh, allow them to come in and study with us as well? But I think that we're, we're doing that. I know Berkeley Music is uh, 
really working on developing a degree program online, which would be beneficial as well. So I'm hoping that uh, we can be involved somehow in that area. Incredible. And now, and, uh, as um, uh, time is um, uh, running fast um, and the uh, interview has hardly begun, and I and you uh, uh, always have fun. Um, uh, let's talk about um, what is in your mind um, um, uh, these days about new developments in uh, the music industry. Um, some greats have died, uh, right. I'm sure some, yeah. uh, some have uh, become born and so yeah. on. What have you been thinking about lately? Well, they've just had so many things in the news recently that I think are of importance to people that are not only in the music industry but in business in general. Of course, you had the death of Whitney Houston, which was a great, great loss. Uh, you've also had uh, just recently, just over the past couple of days, Katherine Jackson was just relieved of her duties as guardian of Michael's children. Mm -hmm. And those duties were turned over to Michael's nephew, uh, Tito Jackson's son. Uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting to see how uh, when people pass, um, the kind of income that can be generated since Michael has passed, $470 million has been generated since he, died. From, uh, since he passed, yes, uh, from his music and, and uh, things that are based on his music, certainly oh, nice. the concert film. They have a certain disarray about Michael Jackson that's based around Michael's music that's on the road doing very well. Uh, so all of those opportunities uh, are created. Uh, you are, you're going to have a great deal of interest, I think, in uh, Sparkle, which is a remake of a 1970s film that uh, Whitney's last starring role in a movie uh, that will be released next month. Uh, you're seeing a great deal of publicity surrounding that. Uh, I've noticed that uh, the Whitney Houston family, Sissy Houston and uh, Whitney's daughter and uh, her former manager, her sister-in-law, have uh, acquired a deal for a reality show that will be on, I think, coming this fall. I just saw Whitney Houston's daughter on uh, a television, a Tyler Perry um, a production, uh, for better or for worse. So uh, it's interesting to see uh, what can happen uh, when people uh, pass on, and it's important in that area as well. It shows the ongoing value, and I say that the copyright, the copyright, uh, the ownership of the intellectual property to both the song and the recordings and films for that matter escalates in value when people pass away so it's important for people to, to I, I think that just reiterates my theme that it's important for us to get a handle on this and for us to have uh, young blacks to be able to come and get the kind of education that they need to know that these interests whether or not the talent is around need to be managed in the kind of way that will be of benefit not only to their heirs, but also can create great opportunities for developing businesses uh, of surrounding uh, the exploitation of those works. Mm -hmm. The theme of um, exploitation in um, music business um, is, very, is very disturbing. Um, what I notice um, is that most musicians do not know how to promote their works mm. and in that they get exploited uh, without um, knowing that they are being exploited. Right. What is the kind of um, enlightenment that an expert like you uh, could give to such musicians? Well, that's why I encourage people to really uh, educate themselves and try to get the education. Uh, there are a number of sites. Uh, uh, Artist House is a site that's online that has a number of videos dealing with uh, the music business. Uh, educational videos that can really help people understand the concepts of what we're talking about. Now, the word exploitation is used in a lot of contracts and, and doesn't have to have a negative connotation. Okay. So when I mention exploitation of the works, we're just talking about the uses of it. However, most recently, there was a recent article that just uh, appeared last week uh, that Rihanna sued her business manager. That's what I would say. Yes, uh, uh, for millions uh, of dollars. She felt that the, the business manager gave bad advice and she lost millions of dollars 
over the past uh, four or five years, and, uh, and she just hired a new manager, and, and they're working on that. And it's just unfortunate that someone at her level, uh, who is being played and across the world, and who is performing across the world, is in that position. And that mm -hmm. shows you that no matter how high you get, you really need to have an understanding of the music uh, business, which gets to the second P, proper perspective, Correct. that you really need to have that uh, education so that you can have the proper perspective of the business. She thought she was flying high on top of the world. That's what I As thought. As it turns out, she checked on her bank account. She only had $29,000 in her bank account, and she uh, had generated millions from a tour. So uh, it's very important uh, at no matter what level you are to really understand the concept so that you're in a position to really uh, uh, check your accountant and your lawyer to make sure that they're doing that, the right thing. That's remarkable, which uh, takes me to this territory, John. Um, um, uh, th th this is just off the cuff. Um, which justifies, then, if you have time, uh, to consider the possibility of having um, an international conference at our Berkeley College of Music to address this issue. Uh, I can't think of a better place. Wow than Berkeley and of a better person than you uh, to, to call for a conference to address this thing. It's a great idea. Great idea. You know, we just had our rethink, our, our second rethink conference this past April where we discussed issues of a, glo a, a global um, uh, music registry that, uh, and that is really been developed now and funded uh, to be developed as a result of, I feel, um, uh, that conference that we've yeah. had for the past two years. So I'm, I think that's an excellent suggestion. Yeah. And this situation with Rihanna yes. could be the kind of thing, as well as with the uh, Michael Jackson Michael estate, Jackson. because not only was Katherine Jackson relieved of her guardianship duties, but it's my understanding that uh, some of the siblings, uh, Randy and uh, Jermaine and others, have um, requested for the executors of the estate to be removed because they feel that uh, something is going on that they're, they're kind of unfamiliar with and they may feel that uh, Michael's estate is being exploited. So yeah, th that's a great idea, yeah. great idea. Tell I me. can um, uh, imagine, um, uh, considering how busy you are uh, for your uh, future appearance, uh, to, to focus on a conversation solely on this important topic that you've raised. Right. If this could happen to major talents whom you think they are major, because in a rounded way they are major in all spheres of their life, right. and you discover that there is a luck in eye in yeah. their uh, business instinct, right. then the time has come to make a case uh, for the participation of brilliant managers, brilliant lawyers, and brilliant others um, to, 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 to surround these talents and save them from themselves, right. uh, as it were. Uh, which is the topic that I would like to uh, discuss with you. That's uh, fantastic. Great idea. Appear again. Thank you. That's a great idea, and I think that, that you're right. We have so many, some of the names that I've mentioned, uh, Jay Brown and uh, Michael Kaiser, but you also have one of the leading managers in the music industry now, Troy Carter, mm -hmm. who represents Lady Gaga, Mindless Behavior, and Lady Gaga, as you know, is, is rivaling Madonna as far as being that kind of icon, and uh, uh, Troy Carter, uh, uh, is the person behind that. So that's, that's an excellent thought. Mm. And I think it could be a great time to pursue that, uh, particularly with what we've heard about in the news recently. Yeah, that's right. And now um, I'm told that we have about uh, four minutes left, I think. Mm, I would like to give uh, these four minutes to you uh, to, to, to cover um, eight minutes, uh, to, to cover and highlight uh, what you think are important themes in um, uh, uh, in the business um, the, for, for the enlightenment of yeah. my precious audience. Right. I have great viewers there, and uh, I can imagine that they are tuned in to listen to you, uh, particularly all those hidden talents yeah. that would like to be discovered. Right. How could they be discovered? Maybe um, you can give some counseling in that area. Well, the first thing is that you have to really respect and develop your talent. I think anyone out there that wants to be uh, a musician, 
wants to be a talent, wants to be a singer, you have to work at it. You have to go out and continue to perform and hone that talent. I say that there's a big difference between being a great live performer and being a recording artist. They're two different mediums. In a live performance, you're in front of an audience, you're engaging with an audience. When you're in the recording studio, it's completely different. The audience isn't there. How can you give the same kind of emotional uh, performance that will move people without them seeing you? I see. And uh, many people just want to, uh, of course, cut one, we mentioned YouTube videos. Yeah, you can cut a YouTube video, but to become a successful performer, that's going to be able to engage people live. You have to actually work and perform anywhere and everywhere you can to try to be in that setting where you have to be on, you have to be in a zone where people are drawn into what you're doing. Uh, and that's the, the most important thing. That is the theme because live performance now is becoming one of the key drivers of the music industry today. Is it? While the record business, uh, record sales uh, are going down, the uh, use of music and the listening to music by way of streaming, not necessarily a purchasing music, is going up. Music is being heard more than ever before. All you have to do is walk down the street and see people with their earphones That's right. and they have their iPods in. They're listening to more music than ever. But the live performance aspect, concerts, tour dates, is really exploding across the world. Amazing. Uh, and so I think it's important for us to recognize that once you build that audience, then you're in a position to move on into other areas of economic development like Jay-Z has done. Now Jay-Z, of course, has restaurants all over Amazing. the country, 40, 40 restaurants. Jay-Z is involved now in concert promotion. He's putting on, I think it's called the Great American Music Festival in Philadelphia, Labor Day. And uh, it's going to have artists from all types of genres. It isn't just rap. It isn't R&B. But they're going to have rock acts from all over the world. So he's involved in, in doing other things. Dr. Dre is involved in the Beats uh, headphone uh, business that uh, they're selling these headphones for $200, $300 each. And uh, he's made millions. Uh, other artists are getting involved in endorsing and being partners in uh, certain liquor uh, types of products and being very successful in that. P. Diddy made more money from selling Ciroc uh, vodka last year than he did from the music business or any other form. So it's interesting to see our talents developing other businesses. And once again, I'm excited about the fact that business talents, people that have talents for business can really come in and help these kind of creative individuals uh, really expand their businesses and hopefully expand the opportunities uh, for us to work and build our economic base in our community. And, uh, in other words, um, um, uh, what you're also saying um, uh, is this, that this um, unreasonable amount of unemployment that yeah. is particularly affecting blacks yes could in fact be combated through black internal resources, yes. which is tapping in to these talents, glamorous right. talents that yes. you addressed yourself to. Yes. And in that, um, this unemployment, A, yes. is unnecessary. And B, it does not need massive federal intervention right. when it could by other means be handled by talents themselves. Absolutely. And that's happening. And I just think that, uh, I don't know if that story is being told. And I don't think I, so. I this is the first the time I've heard it. Yes, absolutely. To be honest with you. Yes, yes. That's why I mentioned the name Vernon Brown and, and other people, other people that have been beside, behind the scenes. I've been fortunate enough to have been behind the scenes for those uh, types of talents. And, and it's important for your audience to know and any young people out there to know that there's real opportunity for you. But you have to have the education. So I'm encouraging to go get the education, uh, get your accounting, uh, become a, a lawyer, uh, become a marketing executive. There's opportunities out there for you. It's remarkable. Uh, at the expense of um, um, upsetting you, uh, intellectually that is, in fact, all that I hear in the news media, even now, as I speak now, and perhaps even on my way home tonight, when this question of black unemployment is raised, yes. is the fact that blacks still remain 
profoundly disadvantaged. Yes. Of and course. the other side of the coin, this untapped talent that you address yourself to is not even mentioned. This is very sad. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've got to do something about it. I think we're trying to do that at Berkeley College of Music. I think your idea of having a conference dealing specifically uh, with the exploitation of black talent uh, is, is something that needs to be looked at. And I hope that, once again, uh, there's a kid that's uh, in the sixth grade or in the eighth grade and they, they love music. They may not be talented musically, but they might have a talent for counting and they might have a talent for understanding uh, the written word uh, and representing people at some point and recognizing that maybe this is something I can do. You can. That's remarkable. Uh, that's really what has um, intellectually excited me. Uh, you have left Afghan ascent with seeds of hope. Uh, not merely empty hope, but hope that could be translated concretely into an alternative policy that focuses on A, discovering these talents out there, B, coaching them appropriately, and C, seeing to it that these uh, talents are somehow made present in um, uh, college arenas, uh, which is D, where appropriate courses are being given. Right. And finally, uh, this could take uh, the, the, the shape and form of discussing it in an international conference at Berkeley College um, uh, itself with you and uh, your colleagues leading the way. Great. Sounds good to me. It has been an honor. Uh, for Afghan Ascent uh, to have had a stimulating, genuinely stimulating conversation with John Kellogg, who obviously, uh, I leave the um, uh, ultimate judgment to the viewers, is working on an existentially uh, cutting edge kind of theme, which is um, uh, saving the disadvantaged from themselves by their own efforts, and not necessarily through unnecessary handouts from others. Now, we have about um, um, a minute or two uh, left, I think. Are there any, uh, any, any, any topics and themes that uh, you'd like us to think about, uh, which we could approach when you come back again, in addition to the conference? Well, I think that uh, it's interesting. That's why I really appreciated you inviting me uh, last year, saying that you'd like to have me back this year to see yes. what is happening that That's year. Right. I'm looking forward to coming back in another year and so that we can talk about the progress of uh, the music industry and particularly how uh, the economic influence that uh, black artists and hopefully their business people are, are making on the industry. And I hope that, uh, and I trust that it will be something that will be uh, in a different position and more of a, a positive position uh, next year than it is currently. That's wonderful. This has been your host, Theodoros Kiros, who I've